how long does it take to dry the wool? We can fit 14 kilos on this rack and it depends on what the weather's doing outside. If it's a nice day outside, like today, it sucks in the warm air and it, and the, and, and it comes through. Um, so generally 24 hours, if oh, that. So not too long. Yeah, and because it doesn't use heat, it means it's quite economical to use. But um, this was built because we used to have beds all these old wire wove beds all around the place and the wool had to be hand turned over and taken outside and inside and it was just a nightmare. So we decided we needed something different. We tried a lot of different things but then um, Stuart came across this accidentally on the internet and um, the original f prototype for it was a horse walking in circles mm. to use the motor. So I said that was brilliant and I congratulated him. He didn't actually even know he'd done it. But, <laughs> but I congratulated him and I got a builder in and I showed the builder and he said, we can do that. And within 24 hours we had it built and it's the best thing we've ever built. So it was only a matter of adapting something that was medieval <laughs> into modern times. Even my wheelbarrow is Kiwi Initiative. This is when I'm carting milk for my calves, so I don't tip it over. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where the wool is, is washed, not scoured. This is where we wash wool. It's a multi-purpose. We also milk the cows here. You're not a big fan of scouring. Um, scouring is using fairly hard chemicals. We do have our bulk wool scoured. That's okay, but I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't mind it, but I prefer just something a little bit naturaler. Is it a pretty straightforward process? Uh, using dishwash detergent and soda crystals. Yeah, and hot water, very hot water. It's a myth thinking that you need to wash wool in warm water. From its raw state, you know, I wouldn't go washing a woolen jersey in hot water, mm. but the water's the hottest we can get it. So, yeah, so it works for us. And then the morning, this is the first thing I do, is in here milking the cows. How many cows do you milk a day? Uh, we milk three. And that's because they're, they're designed to be milked, not feed calves, because they're dairy cows. So we feed five calves per cow. Because three cows would give you quite a bit of milk. I'm getting 60 litres a day at the moment. Yeah. So I rear a few calves. I'm doing 40 this year. 30 are already contract sold. I only feed them milk till Christmas time, and then after Christmas I carry on milking the cows because then what I do is I rear pigs. And my pigs are solely milk fed. And I do three a year because it takes three to get one whole complete in my freezer for nothing because I sell two and then it puts the other one in our freezer for nothing. Your freezer must be chocker. Ah, we have beef, pork, mutton, lamb. Yeah. The only thing we don't do is the chickens, because, I mean, they're obviously an egg laying chicken's not meant for meat. I just can't bring myself to eat my chickens or my ducks. You were telling me just before that the ducks do two very important jobs on the farm. Yeah, the, du the ducks, uh, below our house we've got a big pond, and the pond is a spring fed, and it's not a flowing pond, so it should be a breeding ground for mosquitoes and bugs and things like that but we're very fortunate because the ducks eat them all on the top, so they keep the bugs off there. And they also keep the codlin moth larvae, they eat that from around the bottom of our apple trees. Stuart, many years ago, he um, grafted all our trees. We've got 70 different varieties of the old English apples, and they're well sought after. We've been asked many times, but we actually lost the paperwork with the names on them. And the only way we can tell which apples are which is when they have apples on them. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's 70, 70 different varieties of, of apples that Stuart's grafted himself from all around New Zealand. Barb Peel ending that story. Cosmo was also talking to Stuart Peel at their farm near Ray's Junction. This is Country Life on RNZ National 101 FM. Next, I'm off to the dentist, and for once, I'm not nervous at all. Not many dentists would have this view out their window. No, not many dentists have this bigger um, section as well. Was this building here? No, no, this, everything's purpose built. We purp this was a, um, a paddock with a broken down trough and a whole lot of blackberry in it. 
Two and a half years ago, Kim Tatham ushered her first patient into the brand new chair at Peel Peel Dental. Peel Peel is a tiny town, halfway between Hamilton and New Plymouth, and as far as Kim knows, she's the first dentist the town's ever had. When I said I was setting up to my city colleagues, they said, how big's town? And I think that when I did the statistics, the census in Pew Pew had gone down and it was about 373. But uh, city people don't know how far country people travel. Yeah, so they were travelling, it's an hour to Te Aumutu where I used to work, and people travel that way, so they're stoked for the ones from down here. Uh, but we service a large rural area, so um, yeah, you know, I think Waitoma District has about 12,000 people in it, and, uh, and we are servicing well beyond that Waitoma District as well. So why did you set up here? I set up here for the kids and the family. Pupu's my hometown. And uh, we had the opportunity to come home and take over running my family farm. And I had a really good job up in Te Aumutu. And uh, oh, here come the kids back from school. That's kind of why we set up. <laughs> Hello. Go next door, we'll shut the door and you can read your books. And there's some almonds next door, there's a ball there, and there's some melon in the fridge. So you're saying that you've had the opportunity to... Uh... So we had the, yeah, we had the opportunity to move back and take over the running of my family farm. and. I was driving three days a week, an hour each way, and uh, then we ended up, I, we bought a unit so I could stay in overnight, so I only did it a couple of times a week. And then I'm quite heavily involved in dental organisations, so I'd be away at conferences and stuff, and so we just said, something's got to give, so we effectively brought brought a job for myself here and set up this practice. Tell me about your farm. Oh, farm. Uh, sheep and beef dry stock here in Pew Pew. Uh, it's my family farm. We've been here for over 80 years, which is pretty cool, the family. And um, 